What's going on, everybody? Back in the studio here. Um, I am now on a book called The Brain Eaters. It's a 1985 uh, paperback from hell uh, by Gary Bradner, Brandner, Brandner, who also wrote The Howling. Uh, the Howling books that, of course, the movie was based, the Joe Dante movie was based off of. So I was, I was kind of, I'm in, I'm into chapter two. Um, there's a prologue, there's a prologue in the chapter one and the chapter two, and I'm kind of in this fun little um, character introduction moment where we're meeting our, um, our main character. My glasses this way. Oh, we're meeting our main character, Corey Macklin. Which makes me think of um, Parks and Rec. Was it Dirk Macklin? <laughs> um, are my glasses crooked? They probably are. I got kids and dogs and stuff, and just just messed up. So um, I've been doing this for a little bit, and um, anyway, figured I'd record a little bit just for the hell of it, so I can stay awake and do this. So spend some time with me in the booth here, and of course, like always, this is kind of uh, you know, just recording me working, so I'll be stopping and fixing things and listening things and adjusting things as I go. Um, this one, this is, I kind of like this chapter, there's no dialogue at all, so I can just kind of read, And I'm, but I'm kind of in, like, Corey's mindset, and he's kind of an asshole. Like, when we meet Corey Macklin, he's a bit of a dick, and, um, what I hope, I mean, in the 80s, there were little, things were a little more risque, and uh, some of the language he uses, and you know, it's kind of his perspective. It's not in, it's not first person, but it's still his perspective's point of view. There's some salty, uh, very non PC stuff that he's thinking. So he's kind of an asshole. But of course, who, what characters are the most fun to play? The villains and the assholes. But he's not the villain, like any good '80s, like. Horror movie, B movie. The lead, the lead guy's a bit of a, bit of a dick for a little bit. So we'll see. We'll see. If, I'll see in this book if he does change. I think he does a little, like a little bit. Like in the, in eighties sense, he he does change. He grows. Um. I'm not used to facial hair. I. I've had this beard for a little bit, and I'm kind of getting done with it. Um, all right, here we go. So, he is leaving the office. It's a Friday. He's leaving. He stayed a little bit late to work on a article about, um, about, uh, Milwaukee doesn't want there to be, um, strip bars near the airport. And it's a bullshit story. He's, he wants the big story. It's his whole character arc. He wants the big story. So, here we go. So, I'm, we're, we're talking to Corey. Corey's gonna, he's gonna head to the bar, I think. <clears throat> Let's find where I am. Yeah, there we are. Okay. Corey got into his scarred up cutlass and drove south toward the crummy neighborhood where he had his crummy bachelor apartment. He snapped on the radio, got static. Static. I think I just said on a. I'm going to play up crummy, this crummy neighborhood where he had his crummy bachelor apartment. I used to say, uh, I've been saying toward, toward, and then I was just in this conversation where people are saying, no, uh, say toward. But I'd heard narrators say toward. So um, I'm saying, now I'm <laughs> retraining myself to say toward. I tell ya, it, language is, the English language is goofy as shit. <clears throat> Corey got into his scarred up cutlass and drove south toward the crummy neighborhood where he had his crummy bachelor apartment. He snapped on the radio, got static, snapped it off. He did not really want to go back to his apartment. There was no beer in the fridge, nothing there to read. And the thought of spending Friday night watching The Best of Johnny did not appeal. He turned off the freeway and headed for Vic's. Corey had stumbled on Vic's old Milwaukee Tavern one rainy Sunday afternoon when his grin... 
I'm going a little bit too fast. We're in, you know, we're in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yeah, he's from, yeah, he's from Northern California. He's from San Francisco, but he's laid back a little bit. We gotta ease into the story here. <laughs> Corey had stumbled on Vic's old Milwaukee tavern one rainy Sunday afternoon when his TV had gone out right at the kickoff of a Dallas Green Bay game. Before the quarter ended, he had found Vic's where the patrons showed a knowledge of the game that would have shamed the Herald sports staff. Uh, that would have shamed, would have shamed the Herald sports staff. Vix, where the patrons showed a knowledge of the game that would have shamed the Herald sports staff. The beer was cold, the pretzels were free, and Vic's wife made the best sausage. Here we go. And Vic's wife made the best sausage Corey had ever tasted. And Vic's wife made the best sausage Corey had ever tasted. Also, the Packers had won on that particular Sunday, so everybody was in a great mood. It was one of Corey's few good times since he had come to Milwaukee. I had to change the page. <clears throat> Milwaukee. It was one of Corey's few good times since he had come to Milwaukee. I said Milwaukee weird. God damn it. Milwaukee. It was one of the few good times since he had... It was one of the... F <clears throat> I'm missing words. It was one of the... It was one of Corey's few good times since he had come to Milwaukee. Let's edit this up a second. Right. Mood. It was one of Corey's few good times. All right, cool. <clears throat> he parked up the block and started along the sidewalk toward the crackling neon sign over Vicks. Thirty yards away... Thirty yards away, he pulled up. It seemed noisier than usual, even for a Friday night. Loud voices, breaking glass. It was something more than the ordinary argument over pool or the brewers. Somebody ran out the door into the street. Corey felt the muscles tense along his shoulders. He quickened his pace. He was about to walk straight into the big... He quickened his pace. He was about to walk straight in. Here we go. He quickened his pace. He was about to walk straight into the big story. He quickened his pace. He was about to walk straight into the big story. That's how I'll do it. He quickened his pace. He was about to walk straight into the big story. Yeah, Corey Macklin about to walk into the big story. Get him out of Milwaukee, back, back to a, a bigger paper where life is better. Him being a dick, he kind of fucked over his career a little bit. Um, anyway, there's a quick little one. Let's see where we're going to go next. Um, yeah, the next one's kind of, now we're, now we're, now another character introduction, but not as colorful as, as Corey Macklin. So I'm going to stop there. Just a quick little 10 minute thing for everybody. 
Hope you guys are having a great time. Um, I'm super excited to be doing the Brain Eaters. I've been waiting <laughs> to get to this one. And, uh, and yeah, so, I don't know. Thanks for watching. A lot of cool stuff coming up. I just booked another book. I booked another book. Booked another gig. So I'm booked through March of, of 2020, um, which is fantastic. So a lot of awesome, awesome um, stories to narrate. So a lot of really great writers out there. And uh, when I'm done with this, I'm hoping to kind of get some more kind of paperback from hell kind of things onto the schedule. Uh, there's more Brandoner books on, on the table for me to grab. So I want to grab some of those. And uh, the rights holder has some, um, has some uh, really, really cool other uh, books in his collection that I am that I that I would like. I would like some of those um, stories. I can't say what they are, but god damn it, to narrate a couple of these books that he has would be a dream come true. So. I just got to get better and better and better and, and be entertaining and narrate the fuck out of stuff. So, uh, yeah, whoop, there we are. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening or day or whatever. And I'll uh, talk to you again from the booth very soon. Bye.